Hey there! Welcome to Critical and Creative Thinking Skills. I'm Charles, uh, full name Charles Sharma Naidu. And uh, I'm so happy to meet all of you. And you guys are going to rock. You know why I'm saying that? Because you guys are all naturally creative people. And I, oh, I'm in awe with all of you. And I just want to bid you welcome again to Taylor's University online and welcome to CCTS online and yes we call it CCTS creative and critical thinking skills so that's the acronym so when I say CCTS or any of my colleagues say CCTS then you know what it is CCTS <laughs> so welcome to, to the module and this is basically the introduction of what um, the idea is you've you actually have seen the other video that I talked about uh, creativity right so now this one is just about the idea now all of you all of you are in various disciplines you have multi disciplines you have uh, some of you um, are business students some of your communication students and you have architecture students design students and you've got the other disciplines so what happens when different disciplines intersect now we live in a world where that's necessary we live in a world that you notice all around you we need everybody to chip in so intersection naturally happens right you could google it you could look around you look at you you've been reading articles you've been reading uh, looking at videos and you can tell everybody sort of needs to work together so the so what happens ideas happen so basically this short lecture is about the idea what is what is so important about the idea <laughs> so Franz Johansen mentioned this the intersection of fields definitely creates ideas it combines existing concepts ideas are born all the time every minute now <clears throat> what is creative thinking and critical thinking what do you think that is so critical thinking is really about asking questions simple you ask questions you ask why you have to ask why because um, you you are a creature of curiosity so am I <laughs> I, I ask questions all the time who wouldn't right so simple as that so grab a cup of coffee ask some questions but why do you have to ask questions why um, well you need to find answers isn't that so I think some of you be replying this 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 thing that I'm saying right now it's like yeah duh you need answers but sometimes we need to ask the right ones so how do you know to, that you're asking the right ones um, you need to investigate you guys are officially creative detectives that's basically it right now you have to find the right solutions you just try and find solutions but you need to find the right solutions you got to ask the right questions now in order to write the ask the right question you have to keep asking those questions so you need to be a kind of a Sherlock Holmes now let me tell you a concept about asking the right questions sometimes you got to ask several questions or many questions to ask it now think about an onion right now the onion if you look at the different layers of the onion you, you peel different layers right and then you reach the core of our onion so asking the different questions are like peeling different layers of the onion first you're gonna have to ask the first question which is the outer layer of the onion you keep peeling them then you ask why again keep peeling them you ask why again and then eventually you get to the source of the problem it's like this little game that we play all the time asking why five times have you tried that try it yourself <laughs> you might get to the source of the problem now search investigations um, it's all about research research is about questions Now you've heard that word research all the time like this research scientific research and all that kind of thing right now that's what it is it's all about asking questions right now you got to peel away those layers of cascading problems and consequences and all that now this can take time if the questions are very vague so sometimes you can actually ask very specific questions in order to 
find the specific answers. Now, this is something that you have to practice, and you got to. Uh, it takes time for you to get used to the idea. So the right question is able to slice the onion into half. <laughs> sometimes the right question you can chop, and you sometimes you just get like a shortcut to the to the answers. You know, sometimes you can do it the long way. You keep asking questions, investigation, to deductive logic, and things like that. But sometimes, if you're fortunate enough to ask the right questions, the more accurate questions you get the more accurate answers. So critical thinking is really about peeling those layers. And in the whole design thinking process, that's basically what you're going to be doing in the discovery section, in the more discovery mode, where you discover new solutions or discover new problems. Sometimes you don't realize these problems. You don't realize it because they are so blocked by different layers. Think about it. Now, the right question usually leads to the ability to identify what's fixing, what needs fixing, and what needs solving. Um, if you look at engineers today, if you look at anyone in any discipline, sometimes the problems can be very complex. There are lots of problems, there are a lot of issues all around us. There's one major one, right? <laughs> you know, I don't have to mention it. Um, so you, you know where the source is, you've got to p in keep investigating. Discovering the problems sometimes uh, <laughs> you can find problems in the most unexpected places because you you sometimes the most improbable could be true. You never know. Um, <coughs> so when it comes to creative thinking, it's all about problem solving. Now, creative thinking is really you trying to work your way around those questions leading up to the problem, but you are also trying to generate solutions creative thinking is a process it's not art no i think you've you've uh, you've seen that other lecture that i did and i've told you it's not art it's nothing to do with drawing it's really about you know problem solving now pr when it comes to problem solving there are real problems in this world sometimes there are obstacles that you face uh, i face obstacles all the time uh, you do no matter how small or how big they are, they're obstacles. Obstacles are like things that are blocking you, you know, like you walk on this road and you're like, oh, there's a big stone, you like you can't move. Solution, move the stone away. If the stone is too heavy, why is it too heavy? Find another tool. Uh, Richard Branson, is this, this guy, Richard Branson, he says, if your dreams don't scare you, they're too small. Sometimes when you have big dreams, right, you think they're too big to achieve, yeah, sometimes I feel that way too. But if you really think about it, you if you work towards that, it's quite possible to achieve. Uh, some and this man here is a good example. He he's achieved so much, right? He's achieved so much, but his real goal was to uh, see. He's got all these different uh, different companies, you know. You know, um, Tony F Tony Fernandez of uh, Air Asia. He was inspired by Richard Branson, right? Richard Branson have this whole group of companies here. He's a real huge entrepreneur, very successful man. And but his real goal is suborbital space flight. That's Virgin Galactic. Can you believe it? Virgin Galactic. Can you imagine a future that human beings can actually take a tour around the earth on a plane? <sighs> I mean, in, in orbit, I mean, in suborbital orbit, I mean, like, wow, you know, like, outside the Earth. Wow, you know, you travel to space and come back, like, like taking a bus ride to space. And, but yeah, that's the kind of vision that he has, you know. And they have done so many test flights, some, many have failed. Now, the most important thing in design thinking is failure. Failure breeds opportunity. Failure does not breed giving up. Now, if you think you're, you know, it doesn't doesn't work that way. So he's got a lot of this um, space fl uh, test flights, and every time every time um, something fails, they note things down. So that's the most important thing. Ideas are about opportunities. Opportunities come from things that don't work, and that's where innovation comes from too. When when something doesn't work, when something doesn't work quite right the way you want it to. That's an actu actu that's actually an opportunity for you to um, 
to see what can develop out of that what, what opportunities for you to change things or improve things you know so that's the whole issue about ideas now you have to write your ideas down and if you notice the video on the google site ePortfolio the google site the google site <laughs> ePortfolio actually is the evidence that you have been working now yeah don't worry now we're going we're going to talk about how you could continue to to uh, note things down there and uh, show some evidences and you know um, I've explained some there but if you're still not clear don't worry we'll have we have a, a big whole semester to work on this one so in all our live sessions we are going to do this um, that's the thing that you need to note down you need to note down that your mind is a visual mind um, 90% of the information in your brain is visual. Yeah. Yeah, think about it. I mean, you, you prefer watching cartoons. You prefer drawing. I mean, no one think in text. No, no such thing. There's no text appearing in your head. I don't think so. No. Unless if you... Um, maybe maybe it's a language thing. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you have a Google Translate in your head and you can see the text, right? Well, I don't know. I don't know how you think. Everyone thinks differently. But... Uh, I I believe in in sketching. I believe in doodling. Well, I'm not I'm not fantastic at drawing. Nobody is. Okay, no one no one can draw. You're not meant to be Picasso or anything, but just doodle or create diagrams. Diagrams are visual too, right? Diagrams, uh, charts, and whatever. Those are those are visuals as well. So yeah, you need to write things down. Now, everybody have different ways of writing things down and jotting down ideas. Um, we used to have a workshop like that in campus. Well, this semester I didn't think we could do it, um, but I could show you. I could demonstrate to you. No worries. Um, in design thinking, visual thinking is so important. Sharing of ideas is very important, and uh, yeah, we're gonna have opportunities to do something like that. And you have to work on this thing. You're gonna have to work on how you can exchange ideas with each other. There are ways to do this. And I'm sure there's huge opportunity for us to experiment uh, with different ways of communication, right? <laughs> now, there's another guy I'll talk to talk you talk to you about. Um, excuse me, <coughs> Elon Musk. Failure is an option. Again, I'm saying now I'm not I'm not asking you to fail. <laughs> Nobody wants to fail, but if it doesn't work, now the failure. You no know way does failure come from. Failure comes from effort, attempt. Now, the real failure, you know, is not making an attempt. Now, you, if you try, if you make an attempt, you do it. But if it doesn't work, I don't see that as failure. It may fail. Maybe the experiment failed. Maybe the, the device failed. Maybe the, the, uh, the article that you wrote didn't quite pan out. Or, which, or maybe the, the, the business system that you have created did not quite work. But it's not a failure in the bigger picture. It's just an opportunity. Because failure is an option. If things are not failing, you're not innovating enough. See, these are opportunities for innovation. Innovation is really about developing what can be, what uh, developing a potential. Potentials come from failures. So don't worry about, don't be afraid of trying. Don't be afraid of making, doing. No one's going to judge you. I I ain't going to judge you. I mean, look at the man. I mean, this, he he tried to create a whole a booster rocket that would uh, land by itself. You know, now a reusable booster rocket for uh, space travel saves so much of money. It saves billions, saves millions of dollars. You know, uh, of taxpayers' money and and uh, billions of dollars of of um, expenses. You know, now because a reusable rocket doesn't go waste in the in the past the main problem with uh, space travel is huge and ex it's very expensive and very risky because uh, booster rockets once they detach in orbit they you know they fall into the sea and it's all gone destroyed so it's a lot a lot of wastage but here he been trying to design a booster rocket that been reused that lands by itself I mean how awesome is that you could only see that in science fiction so he keep trying they keep trying and they keep investigating multiple failures identifying what on earth <laughs> is wrong with the system 
See, he, they're doing it. They're making the attempt. They're trying to work it out. But it, nothing. If it doesn't work, you know, it's kaboom. So you see, you see an explosion right behind me, right there. <laughs> okay. So they just never gave up trying. Now, <coughs> finally, there you go. It worked. Why? Because failures create opportunities. Fixing the problem based on failures transform failure into success. It's a process. Now, design thinking is not about art, right? No, no, no. Creative creativity is not about art. Creativity is about your ability to handle your situation. Yes, your ability to handle your situation at that moment of time, and you should be able to do it. That's the idea. That's the essence of the idea. The idea it's it is born out of situation. You know, it usually quite it usually really spontaneous. And I really believe in ser serendipitous discovery or spontaneous discoveries, discoveries that happen just like you know without warning. Now Elon Musk and his team of engineers and designers worked very hard and they successfully um, did this. And now space travel, there's so much potential. They have been launching um, trips to the space station. They they are already gearing up and putting designs for. Uh, flights to the moon and building a space station on the moon all because of this revolutionary discovery think about it the purpose really varies for every design for every innovation but the essence of it is you do not quit now design thinking is all about you trying to find ways not to quit trying to work around the situation so if you're a dreamer, for example, okay, um, you dream of flight, for example, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do if you dream? Dream is a very important thing. Don't stop dreaming. So what do you do? You illustrate your dreams. So you illustrate your dreams no matter how exaggerated they are. So when it comes to ideas, when it comes to ideation, exaggerate go far go out of space go galaxies go sci-fi go fantasy go whatever the most important thing is the idea what is that for what is the purpose of imagining it what's the purpose of dreaming about it right just like a person in prison when you're in when the person is in prison he's actually free in his mind yeah right so there's no limit but then what happens to the dream? The dream of flight, for example, like here, can be communicated to people for a bunch of realists, from dreamers to a bunch of realists. The realists are the individuals who actually will make things work, who will say that, hey, I could, we could make this happen. Let's pool our resources together. Let's get the designers here. Let's get the tailors here. Let's get the... Uh, the guys who, who make wires over here, let's get the teachers over here, let's get the di psychologists over here, let's get all the opinions about this creation and say what, what happens, Look at, get the safety guys over here, let's get... So it's really a multidisciplinary approach. Innovation requires every discipline. Gone are the days where you say like, oh, this is just for that person's job, you know, it's, nah. Now, you know, if you re if you think about it, even those days, everybody has has a part to play in it. It's just that now we are enlightened and we have a group of realists who can make dreams happen. I mean, look at Walt Disney. That's basically what happens. They imagineer everything. Now, they put all the components and parts together. So all the realists, that's, that's what they do. They put all these components and parts together and then you have the critics. Now, the critics... It's all this group of people, the reviewers, the panel of reviewers, and all these people who would, who would look, who will test out your design, your innovation, your outcome. Then they will say, right, I think it's good to go. So that's important. We have critics, you have realists, you have dreamers in this world that could make things work, right? Who can really evaluate ideas. 
and they are great contributors. Then finally, dreams can come true. Now, you see, this is the reason how dreams can come true. Dreams can come true because of feedback, because of people telling you what's wrong with it. So that's the reason why failures is an option. When things don't get do, don't go right, it doesn't matter which module you're doing, when you're trying, when you put your attempt into it, if it doesn't go quite right, don't despair, don't dismay, don't, be, don't worry. It's actually an opportunity for you. So this is what the idea is all about. <laughs> your attitude determines your direction. So remember, attitude is everything. So think about it. I will see you in class. So I hope you don't um, don't have don't put yourself in such a, a high expectation. Just focus on what you have right now, and put your expectations into positive thinking. Just say to yourself, "I'm able." to take this journey and I'm going to take this journey with courage. Alright, so until next time, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye then.